many people who identify as Christians are actually on the fast path to hell and damnation. Just because you say you believe in God doesn't actually mean that you're a Christian. Uh, shoot, even demons believe in God, but they certainly aren't Christians. Do you believe you're a Christian because you consider yourself a good person? Or maybe you believe you're a Christian because you said a prayer once upon a time. Or, or maybe you think you're a Christian because you go to church on occasion. What does it actually mean to be a true Christian? Let's work it out. Work it out, work it out, work it out. Work it out, work it out, work it out. Work it out, work it out, work it out. As I have conversations and read through social media posts, I am personally concerned that there are a lot of people who claim to be Christian, but probably aren't. You know, there's folks out saying things about the Bible that clearly isn't in the Bible. And these so-called Christians are supporting things that are diametrically opposed to God and what Christ teaches. You know, it literally blows my mind. And you might wonder, well, what, what makes me an authority on who's a Christian and who isn't? Well, frankly, you don't have to take my word for it. In Matthew 7 and 21, one of the scariest verses in the Bible, Jesus says this, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. In his letter to the Philippians, Apostle Paul says, for I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows that they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. As a pastor, I gotta tell you, this really burdens me. I don't wanna see people uh, falsely think that they're following God while in reality they're following the world or some made up version of God. Some people have made up in their own minds what they think it means to be a Christian. And then there's others that have uh, plucked out what they like in the Bible and left out what they don't like. If you don't follow the God that has revealed himself in scripture, then you follow someone or something that is altogether different. One that you have made up all on your own. You see, once you encounter Christ and choose to follow him, you give up your old way of life. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new creation. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. So you can't go around and, and go back to your old lifestyle and continue to sin. If you continue to sin and don't feel the need to stop and ask God for forgiveness, it might mean that you aren't a true Christian. However, this isn't a form of behavior modification either. You, you know, when you truly understand who God is and what he's done for you, you'll want to be obedient and do what is pleasing to him. Galatians 5 and 16 says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Or Matthew 7 and 16 helps us to see if we are truly followers or not. It says you can identify them by their fruit. That is by the way that they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? You see, a true Christian would not continue to live in sin and live for the pleasures of this world. You know, when I got married, I, I stopped going out to clubs and hanging out all night with the fellas, partly because going out was a way to meet women and I already had my lady, so it really didn't make sense. But more importantly, I wanted to be with my wife. You know, I didn't stop doing those things in order for her to love me more. I did them to show my love for her and my devotion for her as well. I encourage her, I do things for her and buy her gifts because I want to please her and make her happy. First John 2, 15 through 17 explains what it looks like for us to show our devotion to God. It says, do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. And this world is fading away, along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. 
So in essence, we're not seeking our own pleasure or our own comfort in this life. We're not to live out our fleshly wants and desires. Being a true Christian means that we seek to do what brings God pleasure and show our devotion to him. A true Christian reads and obeys God's word. James 1 and 22 says, don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. A true Christian has a lifestyle of prayer and is also committed to a local body of believers. We find this in Acts 2 and 42, where it gives us an example of what this looks like. It says, all believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. So my question to you is, are you a true Christian? I don't know about you, but this is something that uh, constantly weighs on my mind and there's nothing that I want more than to know God and to please him and give him glory in everything that I do. You know, so that means that I watch what I say, I watch what I do because it is direct reflection on him. And also I have to be mindful to live like he's asked me to live as a man, as a husband, father and pastor. And to be honest with you, it's, it's not easy. But if you need more help with this, I'll be making another video soon about being a Christian who is a disciple of Christ as we're commanded to be disciples who make disciples. When that's done, I'll put a link for it here. But in the meantime, you can check out this video about what it means to be saved. And I hope as you watch this, it will help you to be strong and courageous in living out your faith today.